Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia. Welcome back to part 16 of our tutorial series on Total War Three Kingdoms featuring Tal Tal. And last time we held in a defensive battle against Tal Tien's main forces and then we beat him in a subsequent battle where we sally out of the defense to beat him on the field and he's going to take some time to recover. We could get a positive peace deal with him right now but I'm still a little bit greedy and I want to have a chance to fight him a couple more times given that Pengcheng, being a large town, is going to be pretty sturdy against any army trying to come its way. And we're also going to get a rebellion very soon, because we have been sieged, we lost all our reserve, we also are taxing at the highest rate, the administrator are dropping public order by 5 through his traits, and devastation from the fact the buildings got damaged during the siege. Because of those fire arrows that hurt the town, they actually hurt the building, and all that combined gives us this effect of losing 56 public order this turn and we're already at 51 and that would drop us to negative 100 and it would trigger a rebellion to form and we'll beat the rebellion with our army here uh, which will have no issue fighting some rebels compared to the main army we just fought last turn. Now something to note is that the negative effect from public order is a drop in population. So if we come over here you can see that we are losing 80k from reserve, people are fleeing because there's no food. So that's why maintaining a positive food is crucial because you want to build up your reserve. Now we couldn't really do anything about this because we just got sieged. So there's no way to overcome negative food in terms of growth. But from just public order, right now negative 51, we're losing 8k per turn, which is something as you can see is easily overcome by administrators, other bonuses, and infrastructure from the buildings inside. So that we can deal with. We just can't deal with losing reserves, which will actually hurt us a lot this turn. And there's sadly nothing we can do about that, as we will need a turn before it recovers. That would just be a big hit to our small population. It will slowly grow up, and being a frontier settlement, there's really nothing we can do about it, nor do we really worry about it, because it's not going to be an income center. So let's leave it to be and turn our attention to the topic of this part as we will fight an offensive siege against a small city. So a wall settlement, it'd be quite different from our initial attempt at taking Pengcheng. And we're going to use our main army here with some tribuchet, some range units. Now everyone's not fully healed from the mustering, but this is what we have and that's what we're going to use and we're going to launch this attack on them right now. We have a couple goals here. We want to take this settlement of course, but we also want to capture their general. Now if we take a look at their retinue, you can see they have an extra piece right here when cities usually only have one set of retinue. This piece is from their military infrastructure building, which if we come out of the siege menu real quick. We can click on the settlement and see this building right here. If you don't know what the building is, you can always select one of the building browsers, either in this commandery or in one of your commanderies, and just go take a look at the buildings and just take a look at the art. So here, military infrastructure, this would be what it is. It's a level one version. It gives four units in the garrison. And it also provides something that's not written here. It will give the city an extra siege weapon on the walls so we'll see that in game and if we pop right back into our siege menu you can actually see it being notified right here bastion artillery so this is the extra siege weapon that's going to be planted on the wall and they're going to get one of those because it's only level one eventually they can get up to two i believe if you upgrade the military infrastructure higher and they're very strong they're very accurate so it's going to be very annoying to play around that and we won't have the range advantage of having siege weapons because they also have some on the walls. Aside from that, you can see how many barricades they can place inside the city. Not really a big factor. It might become a little bit annoying to move around the town if they barricade the right places. And you can see how many turns until they run out of supplies and will start suffering from attrition. We're not going to worry about that because we are here to just fight them now. Having siege weapons in our own army prevent us having to build siege weapons here. Or else you have to build one siege weapon at least before you can assault a walled settlement. 
So having siege weapons speed this up by allowing us to assault right now. And we have a few goals, as we mentioned. We want to take it. We want to minimize our casualties. We also want to try to capture him. You can see we have a 23% chance. Now, this does not include the 10% from his perception trait and the 10% from his shaman item. So we're looking at around 43% if we get Pyrrhic Victory, which is considered here, 5%. If we get anything better than Pyrrhic Victory, we'll be able to boost this chance and hopefully we can capture him here. Uh, even if we don't, he has resiliency, so he will at least survive the conflict. So with all that said, uh, let's jump in here and have at it. Alrighty, we're loaded in here, and this is Shouchun that we're looking at. Now, every city's layout is going to be a little bit different. This one is actually quite unique. It's one where there's a moat around the city center, as you can see here. And in the ones with the moat, you have very fragile walls on the end here. That's very small and short, and that's actually where we're going to attack, because it's actually very vulnerable. And the best place to attack is usually this piece of wall here on this type of layout. The reason why is you have three offensive or defensive towers for them that we have to take out before we can advance our troops or they will shoot at us. One of them is a fort tower, which is a bit wider as you can see, therefore it's easier to hit. Whereas on the right side here, you have just three towers, so it's harder to destroy this and if we want our troops to go in, we have to pop one of their walls, and then we run into a different problem of this tower here. Because the way the walls move and is shaped, this is not just the outward facing tower. It will shoot in a 270 degree angle, containing some fire in the inside. Whereas most towers only face outside is 180. Well, this one's also 270 because it's on the edge, but normal ones are just 180. If it's on the edge and corner, it will cover 270. Over here, this will be 270. This will be one. Well, this will also be 270 because it's on the edge, and this is 180. But over here, you can see that there is no interior shooting towers on the left side. And then in addition to that, the reason why we like to attack from over here is there's no bastions. These are called bastions, a little empty slot. And that's the only place where the walled artilleries can be placed. As you can see, they're all occupied on this side by towers. So the only place they can put our artillery unit is over here, or over here, over here, and so forth. And artilleries can only shoot in a 180 degrees forward. So if we force them to place their artillery here and attack from only this area, they can't actually utilize that artillery at all. So it'd be wasted. And we can attack from the high ground. And as you can see, the range on the towers, I believe are around 300 is the range of the towers. I don't actually know the exact figure, but I believe it's 300. We have 500 range artillery units. So we outrange them. Therefore, we can sit back and let our tribuches take out all the towers. It's going to be very difficult because we are only rank 1. And the accuracy on our tribuches at rank 1 is just terrible. Uh, so that's something to make note of. Now, in addition to this strategy of eliminating their towers uh, before we engage them, we are also going to try to spread out their forces. They have tons of men inside. So we have a couple of approaches we can utilize here. There is one approach where we can hide all our men, which we have done before. It will force the enemy to place all their unit in the town, in the center of the town, in the side of the town square to defend the victory point. You see how this one's called victory point? Because if the attacker do control this, there will be a countdown clock of 200 seconds that will grant us victory because it's a walled settlement versus our large town, which is on uh, without a wall. So if we force them to all cluster over here, we could choose to invest some of our ammo to hit them and deal massive amount of damage to their infantry first before moving on to their towers. Could be a viable strategy. Or we can just force them to all cluster in this zone here by showing them our entire army here. So they place everyone here and it's quite tight. You can see it's very cramped here. And we can also utilize the same idea to kill them. 
or we can use some of the troops that we're not going to use in attack and place them all around to divide up their forces and make the attack on the front a bit easier by hiding some troops here. Those are all viable strategies. And I think the one I'm going to opt for is I'm going to show them our force and make them crowd around here. The only thing I don't like here is there's trees here, which kind of blocks my... I guess I can do it because I'm not using flaming shots because I don't have that skill unlocked on the strategist. So I can't fire fire ammos, therefore the trees wouldn't catch on fire and it wouldn't affect us. And plus, if we check the range, it just falls short of this little hill here. And I can place my troops a little bit more forward. And you can see we're deploying outside the deployment zone because we have something called guerrilla deployment. You can see this arrow symbol, which allow us to deploy outside of the zone, but not within the white. The white is their zone. We can't be that aggressive, but we can go anywhere up to the white. Yeah, so I think we get these as close as possible and we'll just show them our force and let them come. And we're gonna guard mode, turn off, fire well, we'll be issuing the commands here. And then we're gonna show all our force over here, forcing them to commit to this wall here. All right, and that's good. We're just gonna utilize these in the first stage. You see they have placed all their troops in this zone. It's not as crowded as I would like, but once we pop a couple holes open in the wall, they will definitely get closer. So the first thing we're gonna do, as you see they load, once you see the, uh, the arm goes down, they're ready to fire. We're gonna take out the four tower, and here they go. All right, and then we're gonna stop. We're gonna assess damage. So we hit out of the eight cannonballs or rock that fling out, it's not cannonballs, uh, rocks that were thrown. One of them made contact, I believe, judging by the damage. So very inaccurate. And that's on a fort tower that's rather wide. Imagine trying to hit this narrow arrow tower. It's gonna be very, very poor accuracy. We start out with 18 ammo. And I believe we're probably gonna have to invest almost all of them on the fort tower. See how many that have missed? Uh, we didn't hit it at all on that second rally. And you can see their trebuchet is right here. It cannot turn, so it has to face this way, which renders it useless. Now, our problem is obviously how do we destroy these given our poor accuracy, and there's nothing we can do about it. Rank 1 trebuchets are just extremely inaccurate. And we just have to survive through this part. And hopefully... We blew the door open. Some missed low. We hit it a couple times on the top, 50 this time. And we're just going to keep firing until we destroy that tower. If we have fire arrows, which we do not have, that would also be another great way to take out towers. We will take damage as we run our archers up, but that would be worthwhile. In this case, we're just going to get rid of all the towers we can. If we had flaming shot, we would only have to light it on fire. All right, excellent, we took out this. It took us five shots, which is not encouraging because now we have to try to hit these small ones. We don't necessarily have to destroy walls because we busted the door open. So we have the option of running our troops through the door. Um, I will, however, take out this. I'm hoping we can do it in three shots. Fingers crossed. That's a great hit. We hit it. At least four times out of that. So maybe two ammo. Fingers crossed. Nope. That one's a complete whiff. And I'm gonna send one over to shoot that instead. Just because we might be wasting a whole set of ammo if we get lucky with one shot. There we go. Now everyone hit that. That way we saved one set of ammo on one to not overcommit to one side. All right, we got one damage on it. So three hits on that, pretty much what we expected. Hopefully we can do the same over here. Nope, hitting the bastions. Oh, that got a hit. So we got two hits and we also killed one cavalry. Poor guy got hit by a rock. Ooh, another poor guy got hit by a rock. I wanna, hold on. 
we're gonna wait a little bit. I feel like the reload animations kind of off sync. They're not firing at the same time, which doesn't really matter. But I prefer. Wait, why are they moving? Alright, I'm gonna wait till everyone reloads, as you can see. And then I'm just gonna try to get one volley where we destroy it. I think we hit the roof. Oh, they didn't count. It bounced off. Okay, another volley. Thankfully, we have a burn buff from what's at, which gives us extra ammo. And the enemy will lose some ammo. Alright, we did it. Good. That's not bad. We have six ammo on one, seven ammo on the other left. And now we can move up. We can move a little bit closer, not too much closer, because if we get too close, the enemy archers can shoot at us. Now, how do we know how far that is? You just have to eyeball it. You can use your own archers to kind of gauge the distance. So this would be like how far our archer can shoot. Kind of, you know, superimpose that on what you think is over here. And the closer you are, the more accurate you are. And how do we know this is because we can manually fire tribuchets. We can target ground. All you have to do is hold down alt and you see this circle form, um, which let's show it on where they are. So you can see this is the max range. Let's tilt it up. And if we hold down Alt, you see how big this circle is. That's the splash zone of the ammo. As we drag it closer and closer, you see the circles going smaller and smaller until they become pinpoint accurate right here. This is the minimum firing range. They can't hit anything inside this area, but super accurate, super inaccurate. So you always want to move as close as you can to your target. And using this alt right click method, you can hit a point that you want uh, where you might not be able to click on an enemy or so forth. There's other uses for that. We'll showcase that in a later battle. For this, now we want to break some walls, in my opinion, especially the ones where units are on top of the walls, because when they crumble, the unit will die. Now, I prefer to kill range units. So it would be these archers. So we're going to crack this wall right here. And let's see. Only. Okay, so we hit two different areas. There's one, this one piece of wall here and there's like a one piece of wall here. We hit 20% on two pieces. Not great. 40 per 70% here. They're going to start running now. They can feel the wall cracking. If we could time the shot correctly, we can still kill them as they run off. There we go. And you see that group of men died. And there's a gap now in the wall. And we're going to wait a little bit. Uh, patience. And Siege's patience is really a good virtue. Uh, there's one issue with killing units on the wall that we can mention right now. Notice how this troop had 91 men left. And you see how full this circle is. As units die, the red behind the background will slowly dip to reflect how many men are left. Max unit is obviously 120, but if they get killed on walls, there's not reflected in their unit loss. So this unit didn't feel the loss. So it would not count against pen uh, penalties to morale for casualties and so forth. Uh, we made them pull back. There's some archers inside this gate. I wonder if we can target damage this. This might be a risky play, but I think if we alt right click here, we can get a pretty solid hit. If one of them would like to go inside, we'll, we'll invest another shot because I don't need to destroy any walls. I just want to kill range units. Come on. Oh. No one got inside. Alright, we're going to use the rest of the ammo on this unit just for fun. Um. There we go. Alright, one's out. The other is still alive. Let's try to get another good hit here. Did we fire already? Oh, we fired. Okay, that's fine. They kind of left. All right, that's it. Uh, we're out of ammo with these two tribuchets. Uh, we're done with them. We can probably move them back if we want. Doesn't really matter. It's just the units now, the machinery. You can see how we don't have full health. Therefore, our green's not all the way up. The next step is kind of optional, depending on what you want to do. In this case, they have a bunch of archers, correct? 
So if we launch our troop towards them, they will get hurt. We don't have turtle formation yet, which will give us over 100% range block chance. We only have shield wall, uh, which will only increase our range block chance to 80%, no, 70%, which is not good enough in my book. We have 85% range block chance unit here, and we're going to utilize them on loose formation right up to their front gate. AIs during wall defense will never leave the wall settlement. To them, that's a bad idea. If they were willing to fight you outside, they wouldn't let you siege and they would challenge you during the end turn. But if they're allowing you to siege, then they will stay inside. And why are we walking our cavalry up? Because they're tanks. So we have 55 units of these troop right here. As we move up into their range of their archer units, archer militia, some are archers, some are archer militias, I believe. Yep. They're going to be firing at us, which they should. Now, there's a couple on the wall who are not firing at us. I don't know what, what's wrong with these guys, but... We're going to take every single arrow they have. And we'll just tank. Because we can dodge 85% of the arrows. And the 15% that hit us will only hurt 50% of the damage. So, they can enjoy shooting at us. And we can even fast forward this and let them empty out. As you can see, their ammo bar is dropping. This one's almost done because it's a militia unit. I don't know why this guy's not shooting. It's kind of bothering me. I'm staying right in front of you guys. Yeah. The archers obviously have more ammo. And they can keep firing. Yeah, they're not wasting their ammo on us. Okay, that's fine. Then we'll summon up all our crossbow units, which have longer range than archers. 220 versus 200. So all their range units are done, except for this one, which is rather strange. I would have preferred if he emptied out as well. We lost 6 here, 2 here. We lost 8 units. Very worthwhile price, if you ask me. And then we're going to send in our range unit to pick off their spear units. Uh, this unit here, I'm going to see if they will fire at us when we move up. Because um, it's rather strange they're not firing. Actually, if I change my angle, would they fire at us? We just don't want to walk into any of their range. Just a another test. I don't know why they're not firing. But as our crossbowman walks up... They're just not interested in firing. Would well, they fire at our infantry, our poor infantry? Please don't hit us. And we're going to come here and target all the spear. The reason why we're targeting spear is we can kill the other infantry type with our shock cavalry. It's rock, paper, scissor, mainly. All right, let's move them up. I don't really have a defensive ability in terms of blocking arrows for them, unlike our last battle with Yue Jin. So, we will just have them march up. We're going to have these guys come behind. They're going to be useful too. All right, they're not firing at us yet. We're going to turn off auto fire as well. I'm going to dictate the targets. And don't waste your ammo on the people on the walls. They're not useful. When you charge your cavalry in, they have to, you know, exit the wall and all that. It become pretty useless. This group of spear guards is actually running away from us, therefore their shields facing the wrong direction for range block chance. Shields only work if you're facing the fire, therefore it currently has zero range block chance. So we're going to try to get some shots on them as they run away. Unfortunately, not many. I don't need them to chase. They're clumping this, they're all going to die. We're going to kill this group right here. They have no shield. So they will take full damage. They're also a captain unit, so they will lose morale when they route. And our crossbow is going to free fire. And they're going to die very quickly. Don't waste your ammo on shielded units or shielded cavalry. That's what we want the AI to waste their arrow on. We're not going to act like the AI and do the same. Shock cavalry take extra damage. How do you know which ones are shock and which one are melee? Spear icon are shock cavalry. Sword Icon, our melee cavalry. 
Yeah, they're just not firing, so we're gonna ignore that. All these are gonna die when we charge them with cavalry in this narrow clump region. And then we're just gonna shred through these boys with our ammo. We might as well move them up if no one's really contesting here. I'm gonna move them all together into the same group and they can come up here and fire. They're almost done. Spear guards. Which way are they facing? Okay, they're not technically facing the right way, but they have some dead infantry that has the shield pointed correctly. Alright, don't chase. Guard mode on. That's completely routed. Switch to this one. They're in loose formation, so they are not going to take as much damage, but we're still going to invest our ammo on them because there's really no other good target here. And they'll still get killed, just a little slower. And then always keep your eye on, on the shielded spearmen. If they are facing the wrong way or not clustered up with all the shields up, definitely try to get some kills on them whenever you have that opportunity. Meanwhile, we're just gonna snipe off these guys. They just refuse to fire, which is rather interesting. We're gonna get our cavalry ready. We'll have the generals go with them. And I guess our spear infantry will be used to enter as well to stop their cavalry. Everyone has a job, except for Guo is just here to chill. Yeah, loose formation does buy them a lot of time, which is fine. It's about to rout. Nice of them to reorganize so that they can get shot. They're moving, they're moving, they're moving. They're moving away from us. Get some shots on them. Now I think they're walking back. Alright, that's the only Z militia that we really want to kill, and then we probably want to kill this guy. He's just kind of mixed in with all the sword unit, and they're kind of helping them shield. There we go. Stop firing. Move them up to here. As long as you don't enter, they're not going to attack. Come out and attack. them go on three. They will charge through this gap. And we're going to take out the shock cavalry that they have, which are also vulnerable to range. They should die pretty quickly here. They're moving. I'm gonna move two spear units here. Where are they going? Oh, that's fine, we'll keep shooting at them. They stopped moving. I was wondering if they were trying to keep moving.
This shouldn't last too long. Yep. Shock cavalries are really bad against range. That's why you do not want to charge them into range. Alright, we're done with them. They're running again. Let's see if we can snipe off a couple as they run the other way. Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, they stopped moving, but... I think... Oh, this one's out of ammo. That's okay. We'll use up the rest of the ammo on him just because there's no one else to hit. And once they are done firing, we'll be moving our cavalry in for the kill. Alright, just a couple more ammo left on the units as we try to whittle them down. We're gonna get everyone who's not relevant out of the way as we prepare for the final assault. They still have tons of ammo. They're moving their other spear guard up. So they're wavering. It's time to go. It's time to charge. Have them shoot at them. Keep shooting at them. Once you get that first clean charge, just take out the others. The more units you can kill, the less their morale will be. So don't go after hard targets first. Take down the easy ones you can't take. Our spear units are also going to rush in. Keep charging. No need to fight. Just bounce from target to target. Take out all the sword units, which are tough, but they can't stand a chance against charging units. Might as well borrow our other two cavalry to come in and clean up as we flank them. These spear guards are still fighting back. Get some shots on them. Do not engage your cavalry into those. Use your spear on the enemy spear. And just keep charging up. And let your archers deal the damage on the enemy shield units. We're going to use these two since they're already here. You chase this one down. If they come off the wall, we'll kill them. Move them back. Alright, they're dead. Probably go... Probably go inside. There's a spear coming up. Um, I don't know which way they're facing. Feels like the wrong way. Yeah, I feel like we can charge them no problem. They're engaged in melee. Uh, we should probably go this way first, though. Uh, I don't think it matters. They're wavering already. So, these archers... Go fire those. Now, there's still these units on the wall, and the best way to do, uh, you know, deal with these are just to disarm, or, oh, he actually got knocked off. So that's perfect. I mean, he ran to a Z militia. You see how random the horses can die here? I don't even think they were braced. But once you're dismounted, you can choose to dismount too, but once you're dismounted, you can just climb on wall and kill people. And generals are really good at that. They still have a cavalry. Which is why we're going to move our spear units up. And the two that are not in... These two are in spear wall, right? Yeah, we're going to put them here. Maybe they won't make it in time. Maybe this is better. Oh, they're, they're not done. Wow. 
Oh, by the way, Sahodun's gonna have a fun time up there. We're gonna dismount him to kill this guy. You see how the barricades block our way? The cavalrys are coming. I don't know if we get braced in time. Brace, brace, brace. Nope. But it should be okay. Yeah, there's absolutely no charge on melee units. We can just break formation and fight them. Go melee, flank them. Make sure they don't run. Now charge. Let's have a general and another unit. Alright, Talzai is killed. He can come out and get back on his horse. If you get dismounted by a spear, your horse is dead for this battle. Therefore, you cannot choose to mount back up, but Talzai can. The thing I'm trying to avoid here is having to go into the center. I would prefer they would both route from army loss, which they should soon, as we are killing them. Now they're firing. Interesting. I think if we route these two, they will start thinking about army loss. But first we have to route them, and then we have to loop. And as we loop, we gotta watch for like interior firing arrows, uh, which there's one right here. So we want to go this way. Alright, they're done. Let's go a little faster. Interior arrows, towers are very short range, so we should be able to snipe them from across the moat here. We'll turn on auto fire. There we go, army loss is kicking in, as they're the last unit remaining. And they should both route, and we win. Very slow siege, but very minimum casualties here. Alrighty, so we beat them. Uh, we took 97 losses, we captured Xun Yu, we're able to employ him. Wonderful. And we will occupy the city as is. I'm not gonna sacrifice 40% population, reduce it down to a large town. I'm just going to occupy. And that's going to wrap up this tutorial part as we'll come back and reset up Shouchun the way we want it. We will do some level up from the previous fight and plan out our next move as we wrap up year 191. And things are looking pretty good as we can continue to expand south while holding against Taotian over here. So hopefully you guys enjoy this part and we'll see you all next time. Bye!